Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Matt, and today we're going to be taking a look at my current EDC setup for April of 2022. Man, how time flies, doesn't it? I think it's been about two years or so since I've done my last everyday carry update, and this is currently what I'm carrying on my person every day. With an exception of a few items and things that get changed out here and there, this is technically what I carry every single day. The one thing I don't have pictured on the table is my current everyday carry defensive weapon or firearm, and that is a Kimber Micro 9, and I usually carry that with a spare magazine and a crossbreed Super Tuck holster. I don't have it on the table simply because YouTube does not like firearms for some reason. Even though as uh, I am an American, it's my constitutional right to carry such defensive weapon. Uh, YouTube just doesn't seem to like that. So I'm going to leave that out of the discussion or out of the table for now. And uh, if you're interested in that firearm, just take a look online. You'll find them anywhere if you look for pictures or whatever. Um, but it's an awesome little gun, and I'm kind of sad I can't show you. But anyway, it doesn't matter. That's what I carry as a firearm. So first off, let's take a look at my key ring setup. As you can see, things here have changed. Like I said, with everything else on the table, it's pretty much changed, but uh, my vehicle definitely has changed. Uh, as you guys know, I have used to drive a uh, Kia Soul, a 2011 Kia Soul, and I recently upgraded to a 2017 Jeep Wrangler Sport two-door soft top. Holy cow, I love that thing. I've went through the winter with it already, and it's an amazing vehicle. Wanted one for a number of years, finally got one and uh, just really happy with its performance and just overall looks and everything about the vehicle. No complaints, as long as you keep up with the service on it. But you know, that's normal with any vehicle. Um, this is a cool key. The reason why I have this front and center is because I changed out my uh, traditional stock Jeep key with this guy. Um, I am a locksmith by trade and one of my distributors websites had this key for sale. I decided to pick up a couple of them and I cut this and programmed it to the Jeep. Holy cow, it's awesome. It looks like a Glock. I think that's just really, really cool. Um, yeah, just getting that out of the way. Anyway, next to that is a full Linux computer on a USB thumb drive. This is a persistent Linux operating machine on this thumb drive, so if I'm ever out and about or at a place that uh, I want to use my own operating system, I, I can. So I loaded up MX Linux Persistent on this thumb drive, so that means I can save any files I'm working on or anything like that to this thumb drive, and when I plug it into a different uh, computer, I can use it, and it'll save all my data. So that's what I'm running on that thumb drive, as well as some other documents that I have on here um, for video editing, things like that. Um, next to that is a YubiKey. So I have all my accounts uh, set up for uh, two-factor authentication using this YubiKey. Awesome piece of gear if you're a tech guy um, or gal that likes more security in their life as far as digital security, highly recommend a YubiKey for a uh, basically a physical key to your digital life. You can look on YubiKey's website to get more, to get more information, but uh, these things are awesome. Uh, and then holding everything together is a handmade key wallet, I call it, um, made by me. This is made out of uh, quality uh, leather, top green leather, and it's buckskin lined, stitched together, and hand burnished. And I keep three keys in here that swing out for easy access, and they keep the uh, noise levels down on my keys so they don't, I don't have to worry about them jiggling around and creating a lot of noise. So I hand make all these guys here. Um, these are made to order. You can find them on my Etsy shop. This one was an earlier prototype, like an idea design that I had. So, I mean, there's a little bit of defects here and there um, in the craftsmanship, but 
I like it. The ones I make now are a lot better uh, quality. But uh, yeah, it's pretty darn cool. So if you like these, I make them. Again, link will be down in the description box to my Etsy shop where you can purchase this guy. That's my keys. And then on my brass tag is my call sign for my ham radio, which we'll get to here in a minute. All right, uh, next up, let's talk about the watch. The watch I currently use is a Citizen Promaster Tough. This is a solar powered watch. So that pretty much means you don't have to worry about changing batteries on this guy. The internal rechargeable battery will last about 20 to 25 years and recharges by any type of light. So solar or you know these lights that are above me right now is actually charging my watch and keeping the battery topped off. So really cool. I, I used to do watch repair a long time ago and I hated changing out batteries. Plus, if you don't have tools to do it, it's kind of a pain. If you don't know what you're doing, it, it really is a pain. And just to keep things simple and uh, maintenance free, I like either mechanical watches or solar powered watches like these citizens here. So this one um, sports a monocogue case, which means there's no case back. So there's no access to the back that water can get through. Um, and it just makes it super thin on the wrist. I mean, really thin. Has a sapphire crystal, so you don't have to worry about it scratching uh, as much. It's got really high hardness, so the scratching is, you know, minimal, if not at all. It, it Essentially, with the uh, sapphire crystal, you have to have something as about as tough as diamond to scratch the crystal. And I use this as a tool watch, like every day at work. So I'm a locksmith by trade, and um, this thing goes through a lot of use and abuse. And I've had this for two years now. And for the abuse that I put it through, I mean, it really doesn't look that old. I am looking at selling this guy here pretty soon, um, just to upgrade my watch. It's not that I don't like it. It's fantastic. It has great loom and everything. I just uh, want something different, and that's the way things usually go with EDC, is uh, even though it's called Everyday Carry, there's always something you're looking at changing. And also, this has a screw-down crown, which keeps water out, and it's water-resistant, uh, what is it, 200 meters? So, really holds up to anything. Really nice. This one originally also came with a metal bracelet, but I swapped it for a Barton uh, silicone strap in OD green, which is my favorite color. So enough of the watch, but that's an awesome watch. If you could still find them, I'd highly recommend them. And let's move on to the flashlight. This is a Olight, uh, what is it? What model is this again? Olight i5R EOS in copper. I love copper. It's just one of those things that will develop patina on it with uh, a lot of use. This one is the newest one, uh, symbolized by these squiggly lines up here, if you're interested in these. Uh, Olight makes a great product. Low setting, it's 30 lumens, which is fine for a dark room. And then if you want to ramp it up, double click and you're into the uh, highest output setting, which is 300 lumens. Really, really nice. It's just a simple everyday carry light. Really, you don't need anything else. It doesn't have a lot of fancy modes, just two modes, low and high, with a loop over wire clip or a loop over clip. So you can attach this portion to your hat, use it as a headlamp, and a deep carry pocket clip. It's also removable too, if you don't like uh, pocket clips. Uh, it's water resistant, drop resistant, all that kind of good stuff. Tail switch is nice and clicky. And it'll last you for years. And since this is the upgraded version, it does come with the um, 1420 milliamp hour, 2.4 volt, rechargeable Olight battery. Looks like a normal battery, but you stick a uh, USB, -C type, USB type C charger into this battery and recharge it. Really cool. It will also run on a AA battery. 
So just for uh, ease of use and carry, it's a fantastic light. Highly recommend it. If you can't find the copper, because I know these are limited edition, they do make these in aluminum, bunch of different color varieties, and they also make a titanium version as well. Moving on to another piece of copper gear is the Refine EP1 Copper Bolt Action Pen. This is really cool, um, nice and small. It takes the Parker style um, refills. Right now I have a 0.7 gel insert, which, which writes pretty smooth and is very easy to find in stores. It'll also take the um, Fisher Space Pen insert and the Schmidt Easy Fill uh, insert. So really, really nice pen. Highly recommend these guys as well. And if I can get this screwed on properly here. Fidgeting in front of the camera, isn't that the way things always go? Yeah, really nice bolt action. Very fidgety and uh, fun to use when you're just sitting at a desk or something. Really cool. Uh, another piece of writing gear that I carry is a Fisher Space Pen Bullet. And this one's in black. I just have a standard Fisher insert in here at the moment. But these are really cool. If you're not familiar with these pens, they write upside down, underwater, in the rain, on grease, on glass, metal, all that kind of good stuff. Wood, and pretty much anything except, uh, I don't know, diamond maybe, but who's writing on a diamond? Um, really, really cool pen. It's pressurized refill in these guys. And, uh, man, this thing comes in handy so, so often. Uh, as a locksmith, if, if I'm marking up doors and I don't have a Sharpie or a pencil or anything like that, this will work. I've used this on metal, again, over top of grease, on glass, for cutting in different, uh, marking different positions to cut in locks. It's just awesome. And it, when it's uh, capped, it's down to such a small size that it just disappears in the pocket. And it's super durable. Really, really cool. To go along with the, uh, the pens, I also carry a basic Field Notes book. Slips in the back pocket or a coat pocket very easy and you always have something to write on. Uh, next up, let's take a look at the wallet. This is a uh, handmade leather wallet that I made. Again, if you want one of these, it's going to be on my Etsy shop in the link below. Uh, this was just made as a simple card wallet out of a scrap piece of leather I had. Hand burnished it, hand stitched, and it holds, I don't know, I think I have 10 cards or so in here. Really nice, um, but I'm going to be making some more designs here pretty soon. And uh, I'm just never happy with my wallets. I have a thing about that. I have carried a Maxpedition Micro for years. Love that wallet, but I just, I don't know. It's just like every time I get a wallet, I'm never happy with it. I just always want to try something new. I guess that's the way things go in the EDC world, right? Inside this wallet, though, I always have a Sparrows Hall Pass. And this is used for slipping lock latches and uh, opening those doors. <laughs> I use this all the time. Made out of metal. You can get these for around, I don't know, 15 to 20 bucks on Sparrows. Awesome piece of kit. Slips in the wallet pretty easy. It's the same size as a credit card. And this has got me out of a lot of tough spots. So I never go anywhere without it. Moving on from that, let's take a look at my current everyday carry knife. This is a Spyderco Techno 2 with uh, pretty much the standard edge. I haven't shaped up the edge or sharpened up the edge at all. Just touched it up on my uh, sharp maker with the ultra fine stones and I love it. This thing is uh, full titanium handles. CTS XHP blade steel, made in Taichung, Taiwan. Full um, titanium handle scales with the Reeve integral lock. 
and the deep carry wire pocket clip. Super smooth, it's got just a glassy, glassy pivot. This is probably one of the nicer knives I've ever owned. Very small, compact, but it is a tank. This thing has a chunk, chunky <laughs> blade steel thickness. Really nice, uh, thick uh, titanium liners that'll last a lifetime. Just awesome. I love this uh, sheep's foot blade. It's just an awesome utility cutter. Something that uh, if I want to use it for heavier tasks, I'm not going to worry about it. Really cool. Attached to that, I put a lanyard on here um, with a titanium bomb bead with a bottle opener. Just looks really cool. It matches the whole aesthetic of the knife. Really like that. All right, let's move on to the sunglasses. Currently, I am, uh, well, I've been wearing the Oakley Ballistic Shock Tube in, um, what is it, tan? The tan frame version. They make these in black, matte black and gloss black, I believe. These are just rocking the standard Z87 ballistic lenses that are gray, non-polarized, non-prism, with the... Um, Unobtainium nose pads that don't slide off your face. And these are really nice because the slimness of the arms are easy to go underneath of a hat or if you're wearing ear protection out on the range. You don't got to worry about uh, any obtrusiveness. Obtrusiveness? Yes. <laughs> really, really cool. Like these are very comfortable. Um... I've had, I have zero complaints with these glasses. Zero. All right, next up, uh, I also carry a can of Swedish Snooze. As you guys know, I'm a Snooze reviewer for the Snooze Central YouTube channel, which is snoozetv.com. This changes all the time because I'm always reviewing something different. But Lundgren's Skane Slim is my uh, go-to Snooze. Something I have all the time. Great, uh, great flavor on this. And if you're looking to quit smoking, this is a good way to go. 99% uh, safer than smoking and American dip. Uh, it's been tested in Sweden by independent uh, scientific studies. So no gum disease, no tooth loss, no cancer, nothing like that. Really awesome stuff. Not saying it's completely safe, but uh, it's a smokeless alternative that is uh, way better for you than smoking. It says a lot right there. And last but not least, let's check out uh, my ham radio. So I am a ham radio operator and uh, it's good to always have one. This usually sits in my Jeep or in my bag, um, but I usually have it on my person as well. I took the clip off for now, um, but yeah, it's always good to have a good radio on you. If you don't have a ham radio license, I highly suggest everybody to go get one. The technician class is pretty easy um, if you study for it and if you learn the ins and outs of radio. Um, yeah, I have this set up with my uh, channels and everything like that. So, yeah, it's an awesome radio. Water resistant. Um, you can pick up weather channels on here, emergency broadcasts. Uh, you could use it as a police scanner. This one's got GPS built in. Um, I can actually use this radio to text to my cell phone or to other people's cell phones if needed, which is awesome. Currently, I am using a Diamond SRH 77CA dual band antenna. Pretty long antenna, <laughs> but it works. And uh, it's... It's an awesome, awesome radio. This one came out a couple years ago, but I got to say, for what it is, it's got so many awesome features. You can use a Yesu System Fusion on this guy to talk pretty much anywhere all over the world online if you want. Um, yeah, there's just so many uses for a good ham radio. And I use this for weather updates if I don't have my phone on me or if it's in the Jeep. 
I just, you know, hook this up and use it. It's awesome. And that pretty much wraps it up for my everyday carry. Um, things always change, and things will probably change in the near future. Again, looking at upgrading my watch and, uh, you know, my pens. Also, by the way, talking about things changing, sometimes I will carry a fountain pen. And this one that I'm also carrying today is a Montegrappa Copper Mule to continue with the whole copper thing I got going on. Um, this is a pen that's discontinued, sadly. But Montegrappa is a great Italian brand for fountain pens. Very smooth writer. This one I have currently inked up with Noodlers. Um, what is it? Noodlers uh, Dark Matter, which is a black that was actually developed and used during the... Um, during World War II when they were constructing the atomic bomb for the first time. So this ink that's in this pen has a lot of history. And uh, that's a story for a different day if you're interested in it. But yeah, originally the ink that I have in this pen was used in the Manhattan Project. So a pretty cool piece of history. And a really nice pen. I carry that in a Galen leather uh, pen slip. And I'm actually making some of these too. So check my Etsy store. Again, links will be down below if you're into fountain pen stuff because I will be making some pen slips as well as wallets and key wallets and a lot of, a lot of other cool stuff too in the future. So anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Thanks for uh, watching this video and uh, checking it out. I really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and uh, drop some comments down below on what you're carrying. See you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.